Lab 9 Pulse Generator The goal of this exercise are to create a counter which will be used to divide down the main clock and generate pulses with the required timing. Creating the counter will also give you experience in using a vector arithmetic package. The alarm clock requires a 1 minute timing pulse for normal time operation and a half second pulse which is used for adjusting the alarm and time. Both pulses are generated from the main 128 Hz clock using a counter. For a 128 Hz clock implies 128 cycles per second, the counter must count 128 into 60 is equal to 7680 cycles to mark 1 minute of time. This requires a 13 bit counter to count from 0 to 7679. Similarly, each minute contains 60 seconds, that is 120 half seconds. So, if 120 half seconds is made of 7680 cycles, one half second will have 64 cycles, which needs a 6 bit counter to represent. The functionality is such that the counter must count the cycles on positive edge of the clock. On reaching the max, that is 7679, one minute must be set to high for one clock cycle. We use the same counter to flag the half second pulse. When the six least significant bits of count are zero, we drive high on half second. We use the same counter to flag the half second pulse. When the last six significant bits of count are zero, we drive a high on half second for one clock duration. Count is a 13 bit signal of type unsigned because count can never go negative. The counter is positive edge triggered and the reset is asynchronous and active low here. This is a design where careful structuring of combinational and registered process is important. Remember when count is zero, both one minute and half second must be one in the same clock cycle. Let us code the design. Create a new file called pulsechain.vht. Name the entity pulse chain and architecture RTL. We need to use relational and arithmetic operators on vector types to create the counter process and decode logic. Hence, we need to use the IEEE numeric underscore std vector arithmetic package for this. Create a counter process to count from 0 to 7679 using a signal named count. We could add another piece of combinational logic to decode count and create one minute timing pulse. However, we already detect when count is zero when we make the assignment as a part of counter functionality. Therefore, we could include the assignments for one minute as a part of the counter process. We see that if reset is low, we reset the count value to 0000, zero, zero, zero and the output one underscore minute to zero. Else, we check the count value. If it is equal to max, we roll back the count value to 0000, zero, zero, zero and drive 1 underscore minute to high. Since 1 underscore minute should be driven high only for one clock cycle, we reset its value on every clock edge before checking for the count value. Else, we increment the count. Since we have placed the decode count for one minute inside the process, it saves the additional comparator logic at the expense of an extra register. Alternatively, we could use a concurrent statement. This saves a register but adds extra combinational logic to decode count. Add a combinational process or concurrent statement to decode the six least significant bits of count to create the half second output. The equality and addition operators for unsigned or integer are declared in the numeric underscore standard package. Also observe that the constant max is assigned with the value 7679 to count 7680 cycles, which make up a minute. Let us compile this file. There are no syntax errors. Let us code the test bench. Create a file t underscore pulse dot vht. Declare an entity t underscore pulse chain. Declare the component along with the port list. Instantiate the component. Declare local signals to make the connections of the dot to the test bench. 
we will need to generate a clock signal in the test bench and this requires clock signal to be initialized to 1 or 0 where the signal is declared. We can add an additional process to count the number of half second pulses in each 1 minute pulse cycle. We know that for each minute we have 120 half seconds hence the max value of HS count should be 119. HS count could be a variable as well as a signal. Declare it as a signal so that we can view it in the simulator waveform window. This completes the test bench. Compile this file by executing the xrun command. Let us simulate the design and verify the functionality. Right click on the top tb file. Select send to waveform window from the drop down menu. For, for analysis, let us add the count signal from the RTL to the waveform window. Let us group the signals bit 5 down to 0 which decides the value of half second. For this, click on the icon here on the toolbar. Run the simulation by clicking on the play icon here. We know that the clock is generated infinitely, hence the simulation runs infinitely. So stop the simulation by clicking on the pause button on the toolbar. Adjust the time scale and the zoom option to view the output conveniently. We drive the inputs on neck edge of the clock and observe the output on the pause edge. At 25 nanosecond, reset is 0 and hence we assign the value 0 to 1 underscore minute and count. At 35 nanosecond, reset is driven low and we see the count value incrementing on every pause edge of the clock from 0 to 7679. We see at 665 nanoseconds, count 5 down to 0 are all zeros, hence half second is made high for one clock cycle. Also, the HS count value is incremented. Similarly, there is a half second here. Adjust the time scale and observe the output here. We see at the given timestamp, count 5 down to 0 are all zeros and also HS count value is incremented. Observe that whenever count 5 down to 0 becomes 0, half second is driven high and HS count is incremented. Let us observe the behavior of 1 underscore minute. At this particular timestamp, we see that the value of count is 0000. zero, zero, zero and hence we flag 1 underscore minute. Also, half underscore second is also high in the same clock cycle. We also observe that the HS count is 119, which implies that there were 119 half seconds for each 1 minute interval. We also observe the rollover happening on reaching the max value that is 7679. We can verify this behavior at various timestamp. At this timestamp, again, we observe that one minute is high when count is zero and half second is also flagged high for one clock and HS count is reset to zero. Also, the max value of count where the rollover occurs is 7679, which is in accordance with the specification. This verifies the functionality of this design. Let us synthesize this design 
copy the genus shell script from the previous lab set the design variable to pulse gen since it's a sequential logic we need to add clock and delay constraints invoke the genus tool by executing the genus command view the generated netlist on the schematic pane this completes this lab